Hey everyone, this is Nick. Welcome back. In uh, this video, we'll take a look at adding some interactivity to our alter scene here. Um, you can add the jars of bugs that you have caught to each of their corresponding pillars on the altar. So once you do that, it actually activates other things, but we'll save that for another video. Um, so let's take a look at how this basic interactivity was added to the scene. First up was to draw a tiny jar that would appear on the altar, and I only needed one because I could just use the same sprite for the separate scenes that would appear on the altar, one of them containing the butterflies and one of them containing the fireflies. So I played around with the sizing a little bit just to make it seem like it fit the scene and uh, wasn't too big or overpowering anything else that you could see. Next up was creating the individual scenes. Uh, one for the butterflies and one for the fireflies. Inside the tiny jar sprites, I'm adding some animated sprites to give the effect that the butterflies are actually moving and the fireflies are moving too. Um, and I think it works pretty well. And after that was adding collision shapes to the altar scene itself and adding the icons that I was going to use and activate once the player comes into contact with the collision shapes associated with the sort of butterfly pillar and the firefly pillar. So if you've seen any of my previous videos where I interact with the fox or the crow, uh, it works pretty much the same way. Once the player comes into contact with the collision shape, it activates an animation and unhides the icons that I'm using. All right, so let's hook everything up. Basically, when the player walks into the collision shape, I want the little interact icon to appear and actually start playing its animation. And then once the player actually presses the interact button, I want the jar to appear and the sort of particle effects to start. So first thing I want to do is actually make it so it recognizes that the player has walked into the area. So I'm going to go to this collision shape. We'll go with body entered and we'll connect that to the altar script. All right, let's test that out. So I'm gonna go back to my field scene. Don't really need the net for this, let's see. And there we go, so that kind of works. Um, so we turned it on once the player walks into it, but now we need to turn it off when the player walks out of it. And it looks like that might be a little off, but that's something I can fix later. Okay, so let's add that next step. Do the reverse, we'll say false player stop. Turns on and turns off. There we go. I might need to increase the size of that collision shape actually because it only turns on when you're like at a very specific spot. Um, but that's fine. Um, it works. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. And get the butterfly one. And next up we have the firefly one. All right, great. So now I want to make it so that when the player actually interacts with the pillar when the little interact icon is active, you can add the jar. Um, so I need to set a particular variable in my player character to active. So if I go to player, um, actually, sorry, not player, player stats, there we go. I need to set interact to true because basically I've set it up so that when the player uh, presses the interact key, uh, nothing will happen unless that is set to true. And that only gets set to true when the player is actually in contact with something that they can interact with. So in the same place that I'm showing the little interaction icon, I need to set I need to set interact equal to true. And that means I've got to reverse that when the player leaves the area. So now the player should actually be able to interact because we've set that variable. Um, if I go back to my player script itself, you can kind of see where I did that. If input is action just pressed interact. If player stats dot interact is true, then you can actually do stuff. If not, it just skips that. Uh, so basically, whenever it's true, it's searching for if the thing we're interacting with has a particular method. Um, and that method is interaction. So I need to add an interaction method to both the firefly pillar and the butterfly pillar in order to get it to do anything. Okay, so that makes it a little weird because for each one of these collision shapes, or the area 2Ds rather, I have to attach a script 
that contains uh, the method interaction. So for butterfly interaction, we'll just use that as an example. Um, I need to add a separate script. So we have our butterfly interaction script. We'll put our function in here and call it interaction. And I'm already realizing that the way I've set up my tree over here really isn't that great. <laughs> um, all interaction scripts should probably be attached to alter just to make it easier. Then I have to like go up the tree and refine all the individual nodes that I need to interact with. So it's not going to be pretty, but uh, it should work. But uh, let's see what we got to do here. But uh, so in my butterfly interaction, which is attached to the little pillar here, um, I basically have to get the other nodes that I'm going to use. Uh, using sort of absolute file paths or relative file paths. I forget what this is, but anyway, I start at the place where the script is and then I traverse up the tree, one, two, and that's what these two little sections are in each one of these file paths. Basically that gets me back to the top and then I can regularly search for any node as normal. So I have my butterfly jar, butterfly interact, and the animation player, because I need to turn on the butterfly jar turn off the butterfly interact and then stop the animation. So let's see if I was able to do that. Back in the field. And then when we hit the interact key, bam, got it, finally. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the firefly jar. Uh, but that's basically how interaction works. And as you can see, there's like, it's still playing that animation. So I have to set a variable basically saying that you can't play or you can't make this little interact icon visible when the jar is there. Um, so let's actually do that. So in my player stats, um, I think I'll put it under bug counts, we'll say, and we'll just call it, we'll set it to true for now. Okay, so here's what I did. So if butterfly interaction in player stats is true, then we can actually add the little butterfly jar. Um, otherwise, it'll do nothing. So the other thing we want to make sure is that it doesn't play that little animation um, if butterfly interaction is also false. Because if it's false, then you can't interact with it and therefore it should not be playing that animation. So actually another thing I want to do is set player stats dot butterfly interaction to false. Okay, basically that means once you've already interacted with the little pillar, you are no longer able to do that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for fireflies, um, but let's stop that other animation from playing. Um, so we'll say if don't do nothing. Okay, so if butterfly interaction is true, then you can turn on the animation, show the little interact thing and set the interact status to true. If not, just pass. And basically that means it won't play the animation once the uh, variable is set to false. So let's test that out. So here we go. So playing the animation, as soon as I hit interact, it turns on the jar and then it no longer plays that animation. So it should still play the one for the firefly. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the firefly and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Else pass. All right, so I got it in alter. I have another Firefly interaction script, very similar things. Let's take a look. I'm gonna test and see whether the animations are playing for the icons and Firefly. There we go, no more animation for the icon and then Butterfly. There we go, all right. So I think that about does it for this video. Um, in the next video, I think we'll add the particles and I also wanna add a uh, little progress bar so that you can keep track of how many butterflies and or fireflies that you've caught. So uh, thanks everyone for watching, hope you liked it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks!